Okay, this lecture is going to look at effect size in ANOVA. Recall that statistical significance refers to the likelihood um, that the rejection of the null hypothesis or the finding of a statistically significant relationship um, occurred outside the realm of chance. So statistical significance is a, a statement about probability. Practical significance refers to the meaningfulness of the differences. It's the actual magnitude of the differences between the means or the strength of association between uh, how the independent variable is contributing to changes in the dependent variable. A school counselor, for example, might want to compare uh, a set of scores on the SAT to the national norm. If the population has a mean of 500 and a standard deviation of 100, the school counselor might want to take a, a, a class of 25 students with a mean of 520 and find out if, uh, the, uh, uh, if the class uh, was significantly different, uh, that 520, from, from the mean of the population. And so recall that we could use a z-test for this. Now, watch this for a moment. Um, in this example, we have 25 students. There's a 20-point difference between the groups, and yet there's no statistically significant difference. Uh, the critical value in a z-test uh, at 0.05 is 1.96, and with a z-observed value of 1, um, it's greater than 0.05, it's less than the critical value, there's no statistically significant effect. Now, look at this exact same data. But instead of comparing 25 students, we compare 100 students. Now look what happens. All right, Our observed value, because that denominator, that error term, decreased because of our large sample size, our error term decreases. And there is a, st a statistically significant difference. All right, so did you notice that with the smaller sample size, you didn't have a statistical significance? But with the larger sample size, you did. So although the magnitude of the mean differences didn't change at all, the interpretation of the results did change based on sample size. So when sample size increases, error decreases. Hence, we can manufacture statistical significance simply by having an enlarged sample size. If you get a really large sample size, you're going to find statistical significance. So, nearly any null hypothesis can be rejected when a large enough sample size is attained. All right. This is, you know, when we're talking about playing games with statistics, this is exactly what we're talking about. So, saying something is statistically significant may not be that important. It might just be a virtue of having a large sample size. Practical significance is important because it addresses the magnitude of a treatment effect without the complication of sample size. So it provides more meaningful information um, and more usefulness to practitioners and researchers. This is very important. Media doesn't need to be reporting statistical significance. They also need to be reporting practical significance. So we're going to talk about procedures for evaluating practical significance. Uh, recall that when we talked about independent t-test, we talked about Cohen's d. And the, uh, uh, the, the value that is uh, synonymous with Cohen's d for ANOVA is called Cohen's f. Um, neither the uh, SPSS or any other statistical package uh, computes Cohen's d or Cohen's f, but these are relatively simple computations by hand. Um, there, this is extremely important in social science research. For the reader to fully understand the, most impo the, the importance of your findings, it is almost always necessary to include some index of effect, size, or strength of relationship in your results section. Hence, we have to do this. All right, this is not uh, uh, this is not optional. It's a requirement in almost all counseling journals. So, recall Cohen's d uh, was used to determine the effect size for the differences between two and only two groups, such as in a t-test or even in pairwise comparisons with a Tukey post hoc. 
And we interpret uh, a Cohen's D through 0 0.2, 0 0.5, and 0.8 for small, medium, and large effect sizes, respectively. And uh, here's the computation um, that you may have seen. There's a, a, a shortcut here where you can just substitute the denominator term um, here with just the square root of the mean square error you're, uh, when you're doing ANOVA. But um, it is a little less accurate than the longer formula uh, that you see, but it can still be done. Okay, uh, notice here when we uh, look at the uh, Tukey post hoc comparisons from the example that we've done. Uh, here I've used this shortcut. I took our mean square error term, also known as a mean square within, of 3.325. I took the square root of it, and then I put the mean differences here, and we get a, a Cohen's D of 1.65. And I can do this formula uh, just substituting the mean differences in each one minus 1 for the next one. The denominator doesn't change. Uh, 3.6 for the next value, 2 for the next value, 6.6, .6 and 4.6. And so we just take the square root of the mean square error term, um, and that uh, and uh, the, so the mean differences of each group is divided by the square root of the mean square error. And we get our effect size, and now we can interpret um, what uh, our uh, 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 and magnitude of the differences were. Notice, for example, that we have a moderate effect size between groups one and three, but it wasn't statistically significant. Um, so that's probably because of a sample size issue. Our sample sizes were so small, you know, five in each group, that we're not going to find statistical significance, um, even though we have a moderate effect. So Remember that a Cohen's D expresses the differences between groups in standard deviation units. Um, so for the first group, we had a, a Cohen's D of 1.65, which would be classified as a very large effect size because it's greater than 0.8. Cohen's F also expresses uh, effect size in standard deviation units, but does so for two or more groups. Um, like in ANOVA, a Cohen's F will identify the magnitude differences among the groups, but it will not explain the differences between the specific groups. To do that, you still have to do a Tukey post hoc and follow up by a Cohen's D for each pairwise comparison. For Cohen's F, the values uh, for the categories are a little different. Uh, 0.1 for a small effect size, 0.25 for a medium effect size, and 0.4 for a large effect size. Um, once again, we can compute the Cohen's F, and this is uh, very similarly to how we did uh, the sum of squares between. Uh, we take the mean of each group minus the grand mean of each group, and then we square the value. But we're not multiplying it by the sample size of each group. We've taken sample size out of the equation. So we simply take the mean minus the grand mean squared for each of the groups and sum it together, and divide it by the number of groups times the mean square error, and we square root that entire term, and that gives us our Cohen's F. So here we have a, a Cohen's F of 1.31, so for the four groups, which is, again, a large effect size. Remember, anything greater than 0.4 was a large effect size. Um, practical significance is not always measured in standard deviation units. It's more commonly expressed in variance units. And there are mathematical relationships between effect sizes expressed in standard deviation units and uh, strength of association expressed in variance units. SPSS will do this for you, by the way. So um, it's always best practice, in my opinion, to express effect size in standard deviation units as it better complements the descriptive data. I think that Cohen's D and Cohen's F are more informative for ANOVA. However, most statistical uh, uh, packages provide a measure of strength of association using eta squared, so they're much more widely used because they don't require calculation uh, on the part of, uh, uh, of the user. The computer does it for you. So for eta squared and omega squared, the following categories are used. Uh, for small, and remember these are variance units, 0.02, medium, 0.13, uh, 
and large 0.26. Essentially what a large effect size means is that you've accounted for 26% of the variance in the model, slightly over a, a, a quarter of the variance was accounted for in the model. A to squares refers to the strength of association between the independent variable and the dependent variable. In other words, is the independent variable contributing to the change in the dependent variable? To what degree is it contributing that change to? Um, it indicates the amount of variance accounted for in the model. And if the strength of association is weak or low, the independent variable is not having much meaning or relevance or effect on the dependent variable. So. In this case, we just take the sum of squares between and divide it by the sum of squares between plus the sum of squares within, known as the sum of squares total. And you get a value of uh, 0.68, which means that 68% of the variance uh, was accounted for in the model. That's a large amount of variance. Well, remember, we had a large effect size with the Cohen's F, 1.31. Well, this is 63% uh, of the variance. And you can actually convert eta squared to a Cohen's F using this formula here. Notice that when we do this conversion, uh, we're off by about uh, a tenth of a point. Uh, we had 1.3 uh, uh, for the uh, uh, Cohen's F, and now we've got about 1.4 uh, for uh, the Cohen's F. So the Cohen's, uh, 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 or for the, uh, uh, when we do the shortcut, yeah, for the Cohen's F. So um, this shortcut does does it isn't as accurate as the Cohen's F by hand, but it's pretty close. It's off by about a tenth of a point. Omega squared is a computation that's also commonly used, and uh, it's just a little bit more conservative uh, estimate uh, for looking at effect size. Some uh, statisticians feel that eta squared is biased, and that using omega squares accounts for that bias. So. Um, we can do an omega squared if we want, and instead of accounting for 63% of the variance, we account for about 61% of the variance. Um, this is less common because, again, uh, uh, it's, uh, it requires computation, and uh, SPSS usually doesn't do this. So, Keep in mind that effect size is always computed when a statistical test is conducted. Regardless if the statistical test is significant or not, you always compute effect size. You always report it. So, um, if the uh, obviously if a Tukey post hoc is not conducted uh, because there's no significant ANOVA, no further analysis is necessary. So. Uh, just kind of keep that in mind. And again, if you choose to use eta squared as opposed to Cohen's F, uh, you can do that.